I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is January 15th, 2019, and in this video I'll be showing off a double coat hanger I designed and printed out, and I'm actually using right now. Uh, but more importantly, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own in Fusion 360. Okay, I was inspired to make a double coat hanger by something I found on Pinterest quite a while ago, and here's a picture of it, and I'll put a link in the show notes. And it's this really cool double coat hanger, and it kind of hooks on the back, so you can actually move these. It's all made of wood. It looks really cool. Um, and I have enough wood making skills, I could make this pretty easily, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to make it, you know, make a print, 3D print and print it out. But how well is it going to work? What's it going to do? Is it going to be strong enough? How do you design it? What, what do you do? What do you do? Uh, so the first thing I did is kind of, uh, for those who may not know, I have a little design book. So I walk around with this and any project I do, I make some drawings, make some notes so I can actually look back on it in the so it helps me think the idea through, but also I can look in the past and get some of my notes from the past, which is kind of helpful. And here's the page I made. So I'm kind of drawing out what the dimensions should be, the relative size, what kind of looks good, and getting a few rough ideas. And also I'm trying to get a bunch of ideas on how do I connect to the wall. I had a bunch of different ideas where I connect something there and slide it on. In the end, I just decided to put some drill holes in there, and it's working perfectly so far. Um, but the first thing I did is I wanted to see What's the size? What's the feel for before I even get too complex? And a good thing to know is this 3D printer was designed for testing purpose to iterate. So design, test, iterate, design, test, iterate. And so the first thing I did is I designed this guy, happens to be printed in black, but he's got no drill holes. And so all I did, I wanted to get the feel for the size and, so I, and if it would look good on the wall and if it actually worked with my coats. So I designed this. Uh, put it out there, 3D printed it, stuck it against the wall, and for sure enough, this actually, for my first go, was pretty close. There was a few issues with it, but the size and the feel of it seemed to work. Um, also for this, because, you know, it's plastic, uh, and it's hollow, well, not hollow hollow, I printed it with a 10% infill. I wanted to make it wide and thick to kind of make it a lot stronger, a lot less bendable, and so that idea has worked out pretty good so far. So that was my first thing. So now my next thing, and I'll go over here, is I did some other test prints to figure out how to get the drill hole right. Well, hopefully by now in the video, I've kind of shown a picture of what I have in my garage with these hanging up right now. Uh, and one of my needs is to have a double coat hanger is we've got a lot of jackets, but we also have a couple of backpacks. Now, for those who may not know, we do homeschool, but we do take our kids to a Friday school here through the public school system. And so they have their backpacks, which are loaded up with tons of books. And so they're always strewn about in the garage and they're kind of heavy, and so I want them to be able to hook onto here and this to be strong enough and to, to, to be able to handle that. So with that in mind, I knew I was going to have to screw these into the, um, into the frame, into the, into the frame of the house, into the, 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 into the wood, so they'd hold up. You, know, you can't just put this into drywall because it's going to break off for how strong I need these to be. So I decided to uh, use uh, deck screws. I have tons of these. I love deck screws. Uh, and this happens to be the exact one I used. I, I'm using a two-inch deck screw called Gripright. I got it at Home Depot. And that price seems about right. I think it's about eight bucks a box. So I got me a big old box here. Got, got tons of them. And so that was what I was going to use. So after I got this design done and roughly about figured out correctly, I wanted to figure out how big do I make the holes? What's the idea? Do I, do I make them? Because nah, you've got this little head here. You know, that's, let's see. Let me see. You know, it's angled up. So do I make the, the hole so thin that the screw is actually digging into it? Uh, and then how do I do it on, on the head here? Do I have it going out? What do I do? What's the best design for that? So the first thing I did, and I don't think I, got, I, don't think I have this in Fusion 360. I might have erased it. Huh. First thing I did is I came with a little test. Um, so what I did is I have this little guy, it's got all the measurements there. And so you see those numbers, five, seven, 4.5, etc. What that is, is there's an inner oct octagonal, I made an octagonal, octagon, octagon. I made an octagon to go all the way through, thinking that that would get a little bit better grip on the side because I need a bigger octagon for the head and a smaller one. So if I look at that, four is the inner one that's smaller and five is the top one. So the head would go through. As an initial test to kind of see What's the best size for this? So I went through a bunch and finally figured out a good size for the inner one, which now that I did it, I can't remember what it was. But I have the coat hanger here. 
2.25. So 4.5 turned out to be a really good one for the inner wall. Um, and for the outer wall, it turned out that 10 seemed to work pretty good. So actually, I went a little bit bigger than actually what I had here. Um, and then based on... Uh, well, that I wasn't sure. I figured out the inner one. I wasn't sure on the outer one. So what I did is then I made this guy, which I do have here. I made this guy uh, to print out as a test uh, because I want to see, now that I had this, I knew I was going to be that deep. I wanted to see how well it worked that deep. So I wanted to see how far I needed to go in and how big I needed to do the outer, the outer octagon. And so here, the inner octagon is 4.5. And you can kind of see it down there, right there. Oops down there very deep, and the, and the top one is different, you know, 8.5, 9, 10. I want to see what the differences were. And so I tried these all out, printed this out. Um, also, I printed this, since I am printing this like this on the bed, I wanted to print this uh, like that to match, to make sure that it was still going to print really well in an octagon fashion. So I tested that out, uh, worked really well, and figured out that 10 worked. So, you've got a 3D printer, test. Don't try to come up with, a, you know, if I try to do do it perfect on this big one to begin with, that's a lot of PLA to waste for no good reason versus something like this. And then something like this, I can actually keep around because I put numbers on it. So I can reuse that again if I need to test some other bolt or something, um, some other wood screw. But anyway, iterate, test, it works. So that is what I did for my testing. And now that I had a good size Oops. Oh, as I fling things around now that I had a good size and I had a good hole size and depth to figure to that worked now I could put together and actually make my final design so I'm gonna go over that and then kind of redo it really quickly to show you what I did so that you can do your own I, I I have no plan on posting this on Thingiverse because this is very custom for my needs and I don't think anyone's gonna care about doing this in their garage but you probably have, well, maybe I should, you know, maybe I'll put it on Thingiverse just because it's fun to put things on Thingiverse. Um, but I'm sure most of you out there probably don't need this exact hanger, but you need, you might need a triple one or, or just a single one. What do you need? Go design it in Fusion 360 uh, yourself um, with some little help from me as I go over this. So now let me go over what I did and Kind of redo it and show you what I did. Okay, now here's my design. So you can see it right here. There it is, all in its glory in 3D. Uh, and so pretty simple. Once I got it, you know, press pull to out here, then I just had to draw on this plane to actually make uh, my octagonal hole all the way through. That's pretty simple. And then on the top, if I go back and edit my first sketch, you'll see. It's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to it. So that was some of my tweaks and my measurements. Uh, and then just press pulled the whole thing. So there's not a whole lot to it. But with that, I may have to go back and forth and cheat a little bit. But let me see if I can redraw something relatively close to what I did here. Something over here, a new one. Click here and say create a sketch plane. And then we'll kind of... Okay, I'll cheat. I gotta cheat. So I'll look at here and I'll see, okay, that's 10 inches. Uh, 10, 100 millimeters and 75 millimeters. And then we have, so I got 100 by, yeah. Thirty, there we go. 100 by 30. So I come in here, press S, make a rectangle, and then do 30 millimeters by 100 millimeters. There we go. And then, then we start to, oh, let me get rid of that. Don't save. Then we can start to put our angles in. So we go here and we'll start making this guideline here. So I want that going out. Hit my S, well, I don't have to hit S. I hit L for line and start doing my line here. And then what I can do, this can be a guideline. So I hit tab and I figure out what I want my degrees to be. So I can hit here and hit 30. Uh, and that probably seems like a good number, 30 degrees. And I want it to kind of, sorry, hit 30, and then hit tab. Now that 30 degrees locked in. Hit enter, and there's a guideline. And then I can come over here and go, okay, I don't know what I want to do on that. So I'll hit a, 
a line here and I'll have that kind of going this way and I'll make it a little longer. And now that's perpendicular to that one. And then I will use my D tool and figure out how big do I want to make this. Oh, there we go. And let's say, eh, we'll make it 30 millimeters. And it's just a matter of building this thing up. And I want that to be, let's go like that. And I will build up off of this. Let's have it go. And then I'll say, okay, how deep do I want that? Eh, not too deep. Let me see, what did I do? about 75. Hit the D key, press that, that, come out here, enter 75. L. I figure this is going to be, no, 25. We'll try 25 right now. Hit the L key. Oops. Ah, come on. 25, enter. Come back down, match that. Uh, start hooking these up so I can see a little shape. There we go, a little shape there. Come up here. I want that guy angling up. I'll say 60 degrees. They don't have to match. Let me see. I'll try 45. Nah, I'll see. I'll say 60 for now. Maybe a compromise. 55. Boom. It's just a matter of playing with this stuff. Yeah, see, I didn't get the right angle I wanted there, so I want that to be parallel, even though they're not going to match. Hook them up, hit S, do a circle. Now, if you see, when I when I hover over there, I get a little triangle. That triangle means center point, so that just works perfectly when I'm trying to do a circle here. And there I roughly go. Now, being the engineering dweeb that I am, and also aesthetics, I don't like these sharp corners. And also here, I think it needs to go up a little higher. It needs to have a little more of a backbone to it. So, oops. Hit the L key. Come up here. Do a little circle here. And now I can put some arcs in. So I can say S and do a three point arc here and here and kind of fiddle with it. Here and here. There we go. And also you see right here, this little <clears throat> circle with a line through it means tangent. So that line's gonna be really smooth. One thing I did when I did one of this, and you probably can't really tell, but when I printed this out, I didn't do it tangent, and I can feel a nice bump in there. So when I went to go redesign it, <clears throat> I went in here, hit this button, hit the tangent button, and hit that line, and you can see it actually adjusted. Even that, that was wrong. That wasn't gonna be quite right. So now it's gonna really smooth that line out. That one's tangent, but see, this one's not. So if I say tangent to that, of that tangent. Well, it moves things around, doesn't it? That tangent to there we go. Look a little better. 
Mine's a little different. I have a little knuckle up there that I did. But anyway. Mm. Oh, I kind of prefer that knuckle. There we go. Do a little more of that. And then right there. There we go. And then I can clean them all up with these. Arc tangent. And I might need some more cleaning, but you get the idea. That one looks good. So there's a rough design. Uh, now press Q for the press pull tool and select all the pieces parts you want. In this case, we don't want every single one. There we go, Q, and figure out how, how high you're going to go. I forget what I did, but I'll just type in 60 for now. And there we go, basic design. Uh, then you want to put some holes in it if you're going to do what I did. And that's pretty simple. So you go to the back here, click on here, and say create a sketch. And so now I'm drawing on this back, and then I can help make some lines to help guide me. Hit the L key, and here... That's the center of that line. That's the center of that line. Hit escape, choose that line, and then make it a construction line just so it doesn't interfere with you. And then in my case, I'm using octagon, so I'll kind of repeat that. So I'll say, I was a little more precise in my measurement, but I'll just throw them in right now. So I'll hit that. I'll say six sided, and I think it was 10 on the outside. Do the same thing, and what I say? Oh, I said 2.25 on the inside. Boom. Ah, that's wrong. That should be 5 because I did 10 diameter. And there we go. And then I should stop. I think I should be able to select all those and copy. And I can just move them. That seems like a pain. And I'll just remake them. See five, oops, no, no, no. Yep, five, six sides. Enter. One more time. 0.25. Boom. There we go. And so now I know the inner ones have to go all the way through, so I'll select both of those. Shift, select, and press Q for the press pull tool and I'll pull them all the way through but what I can do is I can pull them further and that works or I can say to an object and the object is that and I think I don't think it likes doing it's too much of an angle okay I did this last time it's, it's a weird thing so you have to do them one at a time so I can do that side hit OK uh, 
bring my sketch back. Now choose this one, press pull. And this time I'll just, I'll just pull it all the way through because it's the same effect anyway. It's the same effect, but if you do it to a plane like I did there, if you actually readjust your measurements later on, this will readjust with it. The way I just did it right now won't. So you gotta think about that. Do a parametric design versus just throwing it in there. All right, so now the last one, select that, select that, Q, press pull. Then you gotta figure out how deep you wanna go. Uh, and I think I did negative 10 millimeters. And there we go. I think we are done. There you go. So it's been created. And then from now you can make a 3D model. So I can say 3D print, select the whole thing, hit OK. And I'll just call it uh, Coat Hanger. But from video. So I'm not going to actually use it, but it's cool to look at. Um, but also it is important to know, but now that I've got it, it's important to know you have to debate on how you're going to st stick it in. Did I stop? You have to debate how you're going to stick it on your, push too many buttons, how you're going to stick it on your slicer. So if I, because of how the slicer is going to do the internal structure is going to change the strength and rigidity of it. Uh, now I keep things simple and I only use Prusa control. So my, um, what it's going to do for the slicer inside is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be, you know, cross hatches. There are other, there are other slicers that do, that do more complex things. They can do some really cool stuff. I don't have that. And so I'm not going to go over it, but how, but how you place it here. So if I place this like this, you know, the hashes are going to be up and down, left and right. And that's not quite ideal for these angles that are going up. So what I did is I rotated it. Let's see. I rotated to get the cross hatching different. And so if you look at, I have one, I have one, I have one partially the way done. And you can see I've done the cross hatches like that. So that gives a little bit more rigidity and strength to that. Uh, also to the top, I don't know if you can see that very well. It adds rigidity and strength the way it's done. Now there's other, other ways you can do it, but I'm only using Prusa control to be simple. And this has been pretty tough. Uh, I've got some pretty heavy backpacks on it outside and it's been working pretty good. So anyway, with all that fun stuff, let me go print my actual print that I created before and go over the numbers. Okay, I decided to go put this on Thingiverse. It happens to be Thing 3359083. So if you like, go download it, print it out. Um, but anyway, now let me go through the numbers. So as you watch this uh, time lapse video, this is actually a time lapse that failed. <laughs> so it actually got 99% of the way and then uh, I actually frayed the wires on my heat bed. And so I had to go do actually emergency repair last night and then reprint it. But other than the last little bit, the time frame's the same, but I printed another one out overnight so I can get the actual good statistical numbers. Uh, so here's the numbers. It took five hours and 33 minutes to print this guy. It took 4.4 cents for electricity and it weighs 0 0.110 kilograms. I did it with a 10% infill and I think that's been more than enough for what I'm doing. I thought it might need more, but I think it's fine with 10% if you orient it in the correct way. Uh, so uh, with 0 .11, 0 0.11 kilograms at $20 per kilogram for a roll, that comes to $2.20 worth of filament. So in total, this costs $2.25 to print out. And I think it's pretty cool. I've got two in the garage right now. I'm gonna go put this one up. So we'll have three and we're using it. And worst case, if it breaks, I'll make a stronger one or, but, but I like the idea. It's working for us. Uh, if for some reason this doesn't uh, last, um, I'll redesign it because I like having this double hanger. Um, anyway, um, anyway, if you if you like it, if you like the one I designed, hey, go download it, print it out. Uh, if you don't, I but you have a need for a custom hanger. I hope this video gave you a few tips to help you get that job done. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, 
have a piece of info to share, just post a comment.